bum 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 Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 1 1 1 1 Took me about a week to see it, but I finally saw it yesterday with my girlfriend. Um, right, right from the get. Let's just get this over with. Right, like, well, get it over with. Get it out of the way. Fantastic movie. Fan freaking tastic movie. I will still say Spider Verse is my favorite film. I think it's the best film of the year. But this is gonna be right in my top five. This is, right now, this is easily in my top five best movies of the year. Easy. Maybe even my top three. I'd have to, I haven't thought long and hard about the top three. But the top five? Oh, it's definitely in the top five. <laughs> it's definitely in the top five. But it is. Um, it's. I mean, well, so it's been out for a week now, so I can. I won't go into too much spoilers about like what ultimately how it ends. Uh, but I can at least talk about some plot points. I think a bit more in depth. So I mean, the story is Ethan Hunt still doing what Ethan Hunt does. But. Uh, if you've heard at least a little bit, then you know, like, the MacGuffin in this, the enemy, if you will, in this, is AI. They're dealing with the concept of AI and how it's going to kind of change the world. And the issue itself with AI, the fact that AI is a double-edged sword and how that ultimately uh, works. Uh, and I like, the, I like how they portray that concept in here. They portray it actually very... I won't go so far as to say they portray it uniquely, but they portray it in a way that I don't usually see in a movie. A very realistic, very dangerous way. Great, it's heightened for reality, but we are getting to a point in our reality where if we're not careful, that could become a legit problem and something that would legit uh, happen with people or happen in the world. And it's Ethan who's trying to bring this AI down. Um, as well as, you know, the people who are working for, working with, uh, controlling, whatever have you, the AI. And, like always, Ethan's kind of gone rogue on the mission. So, there you go. That's your general, uh, that's your general layout. You get the returning characters, obviously, of, uh, Luther, Benji, uh, Elsa. You get new, you get the new characters of, uh, Gabriel, uh, the White Widow, or well, Vanessa Kirby comes back. Paris, who's played by Palm Clementine. Um, and, um, oh, where is she? Uh, where is she? Uh, Grace, played by Haley Atwell. Uh, and, now look, all, all the returning characters are just as you love them. Ethan Hunt is still running like a madman just for the camera for long takes. Uh, but you know, he is kind he's the, he's the hyped up ever. You know, that's the best way I think I can put it. For Ethan Hunt compared to someone like a James Bond, John Wick, Jason Bourne, which is usually the like the uh, company he keeps in these conversations, is that between those four, he's the everyman of that group of spies, hitmen, whatever you want to call him. He's more a spy than anything else. Is that he is capable? He can kick ass, but he can but he can mess up. He can get in situations where he does not want to be in and may not have and he has to think on his feet quick, even more so than Bond. And the plan does not always go to uh, does not always go to pan. So he's and because of, and, he's, and he, I think he has the most human. He's the most human, weirdly enough, of all of them. He's the most. He's the one who has the most emotion out of anyone in that group. He's the one who uh, mourns the most when someone's lost. He's the one who gets the most angry and is the most. I, well, to be fair, I'd say. John is more angry, but John knows how to control that rage better. I think that's the big thing there. Um, but anyway, yeah. And you see all of that on full display. Plus, he's also quippy. He's got, he's funny. Uh, but when he gets intense, he, you know, you, lo you love it. You love seeing him. You love seeing him do the action. Uh, Luther and Benji are great, too. They got some actually good moments in there. Like, nothing amazing, but they got some good moments where, like, they're talking to Grace, Haley Atwell. Um... And yeah, they're just they're just always good series regulars to have. You like seeing them. Uh, and that, I mean, and you got some, again, you got some of the returning cast with uh, what's his name? Uh, is it Sean Wiggum? Yeah, Sean Wiggum, the returning CIA character. Uh, it's also some new characters with like Carrie Elways. He's the director of uh, Dillinger. He's like I believe he's director, not the director. I think he's director of the CIA. Is that right? Um, so and he's he's good. Not I mean there's not he's that bad. That's for certain. Uh, but then you get the new characters. Palm Clementine is five shades of fun. 
Um, my girlfriend didn't even know that was Mantis at first, but she's great. Um, she is, she's basically like this henchwoman of, uh, Gabriel, who was played by, I got the, I got the IMDb up here, played by, uh, yeah, uh, Is, Isai Mora, uh, Morales, uh, who also played Deathstroke in, uh, Titans. But, um, so he's, so, so she's, and she wills us, and she has a sword with her half the time. So she's just crazy for this sake, kind of, of the sake crazy, but not, she's like mixing Harley Quinn with a hit, with a straight up hitman, basically. There's just that little bit of insanity there, and it's great. Uh, but Gabriel, played by, again, Isaiah Mor- Morales, is, is awesome. Like the man is, he, the man just oozes confidence, he uses charm. But you can also tell, like, this This is a menace. This is, like, this is not a guy you want to cross or F with. Um, and he shows that in, in all, in full display in the movie. Then you get, obviously, like I said, Rebecca Ferguson came back. And she's good. I will say this. Of all the, everyone returning, she, she's good. Everyone's good. But she is also the maybe ye- least utilized. I won't say where, what I mean by that, but she she is used... Her, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. There's a fake-out plot point-wise involving her that then, then gets erased. Um, so keep your eyes out for that. Uh, but yeah, she's, she's good. She, the, the action is nothing but fantastic. Uh, and I think part of the reason why in a three-hour movie it's so fantastic and it doesn't feel drawn out is the fact that you are taking a lot of time for each action sequence. You're really giving them their care. Hell, the action sequence, I think the first, is it the first major action sequence, if I'm not uh, mistaken? Um, I'm trying to remember that the first action, was it, it was in the beginning or... Oh, the first major one I remember is... Oh, no, 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 no. The first action sequence is in the desert. That's right. And that's really... That's actually a really cool... I've never seen, like, a shootout in a sandstorm before. That's actually... It was pretty fun. Um, and... then, But then the second action scene, which you see in the trailer, is the car chase in uh, Venice. That is... That takes, like... That's, like, a 30-minute sequence. But it's so well executed. It is awesome. Uh, then obviously you get the train sequence at the very end. That's that's fantastic as well. It's not where you get to get the, um, the stun and jump jumping off the cliff. Um, but um, and, but then there's other <laughs> stunts that come with that, and just kind of keeps building and building and building. Uh, Haley Atwell, Haley, me and my, I was thinking this, and my girlfriend actually brought it up when uh, after the movie was done. I was like, Haley Atwell, first off, is great. But she's what they were trying to do with Phoebe Waller-Bridge in uh, The Dial of Destiny. Having this roguish kind of character who's been, you know, living on the edge, uh, stealing, lying, cheating, whatever she needs to do to survive. But the pro- what, but where the Phoebe Waller-Bridge character, they didn't execute that well. If they were trying to get she had a bad past or something like that, and she's scared, they didn't portray it well. They just she just came off like an asshole. All she did was come up like an asshole. But um, uh, but here it's it's you, first off, and no offense, if you, again, people are all bunch it has charm and charisma. It's just it's it was hampered by the writing of that film. Um. But um, first of all, Haley Atwell already comes off as a very likable, charming, roguish character. Uh, there, uh, but she quickly get the uh, you quickly understand, and she actually quickly starts to understand she's in over her head. Whereas the Phoebe Waller Bridge character never seemed to; she always seems stuck in that mindset and reality. Where it's like, I'm not in over my head. No, not at all. No, I can just keep dicking you around and say I'm dicking you around to your face, and it's all good. Whereas here. No, the Haley Atwell character really understands very quickly. She's in under her, over her head, uh, and that actually that makes her relatable. That makes her human. And when things happen to her, you you want her to make it out. Whereas for a good chunk of the movie of Dial of Destiny, I didn't care if that character made it out or not. She probably was, but I didn't care. Um, so yeah, and yeah, I can't I can't really think of anything 
that is wrong. There's nothing wrong with the movie. There might be like one or two moments where I go, wait a minute, <laughs> but that's about it. I half expected one plot. Like there were a couple plot points I kind of saw coming, but I ultimately wasn't. Um, I, I, I ultimately expected a one more plot point to happen and it didn't happen. I'm like, I'm glad it didn't happen to what I was thinking. Uh, and the movie ends, even though it's part one, it ends in a way where it feels like a complete story, but it's ready for the next continuation of this story. Uh, so look, overall, I love the, the I loved this film. This was a fan freaking tastic film. Absolutely. It deserves all the praise it's getting. I hope it's able to make its money back. It had a good opening weekend worldwide, but the domestic wasn't the greatest. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, hopefully it recoups its money. Um, so anyway, what did you think of the movie? Have you seen it yet? Let me know. Until then, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later. Have a good one.